Let's get real. Welcome to TBC Today. This podcast features friends in and around the Triad Baptist Church community. Hear encouraging real life stories from our weekly guests and inspiring insights from our host, Pastor Rob. To learn more about Triad Baptist Church in Kernersville, North Carolina, visit us online at tbcnow.org. Welcome to TBC Today. Uh, it's spring. Are y'all loving this weather? And we are too. It's great. And we're super excited because we are moving into April quickly. And in April, we've got three big things happening. We have uh, the choir's uh, Easter performance the first weekend. The second weekend of April is our Easter Sunday and the world's Easter Sunday too, I guess. (laughs) But we're celebrating that. And then the last weekend of April is a dinner show that we're doing here at Tribe Baptist. And so that's what we want to talk about today on this special bonus episode of TBC Today. Our guests, Melissa Beck and Lindsay Huffman, they've been around Triad Baptist for a long, long time. I've been here for 11 years and have uh, had the privilege of being able to work with them and get to know them uh, in multiple facets because they are busy ladies who do a lot in our church. But one of the great things that they do is they serve in our drama ministry here, and they are affectionately known as Mary and Bright. And the show that we're doing at the end of April is the third, a third story with Mary and Bright in it. So that's what we want to talk about today with Pastor Rob. Are you ready to get real? That is interesting. Yes, I'm ready to get real. Let's do it. Okay, we'll start the Sands of Time. And we timed this for about 30 minutes, and that's the length of it there. So uh, great to have you guys. Thank you for coming in today to kind of talk with us a little bit about it. So we want to focus kind of on... Uh, not so much the play itself, but just kind of how you guys ended up getting in acting and why that became a passion of yours. Where did you all start out? Either one of you go. I started out in kindergarten. Um, when I was in kindergarten, my kindergarten teacher cast me as the little red hen in kindergarten graduation. <laughs> and so that role involved singing and acting. So that was my very first singing and acting role. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, um, just let me take paint the context from my perspective. What do you do for a living? Uh, I am in research compliance. I work for Duke University, and I review uh, research studies to make sure they're okay, in compliance. Okay, let me say, to me, from my perspective, <laughs> that is like completely two opposites. You know, you're all the way over here, in a, probably with your head on a number or something all the time, and then yet you do this. How did that, how did that happen? Um, you know, actually, I was a uh, shy kid when I was in um, when I was young. And so um, I love to be read to. And so my mom would read to me and she would, I would allow her to read to me for so long that she would actually like her voice would start to go hoarse. And when she would read to me, she'd read with a lot of expression. And so when I started kindergarten and I would read aloud, my kindergarten teacher noticed that I read with a lot of expression. And so that's how she, you know, came to cast me in the role as the little red hen. So, well, and I just like always enjoyed that. thinking about your career, like at 18, did you ever think acting or did I, you just... I didn't. Um, I I do have a degree in communications, and so I was able to use um, my interest for public speaking in that realm. So you do so, represent the company in that way sometimes. You I to, do. I do oh, um, okay. t- uh, teach and um, teach some uh, research uh, related uh, workshops and things like that. So. Yes. And uh, do people say you're very expressive there, too? They do. <laughs> <laughs> you can get excited about that, too? Yes, you can. <laughs> That's cool. All right, how about you, Lindsay? How did you get into it? I can't pinpoint, like, the age, but I do know the stage of life because um, it was adolescence, you know. Well, I guess it would have been elementary as well um, with Kernersville Children's Theater. Um, my mom started putting me and my brother in that very early on. Um, I come from a broken home, and so that was like a, an outlet, I think, that she wanted to tap us into, so it was a way for us to get some energy out, meet people, um, and that kind of thing, and so I can remember he would be like lead role one year, and then I would be like lead role, <laughs> and it was a way for her to be involved in our life as well. She's a seamstress by trade, and so she would make all of the costumes for the plays and that kind of thing, and so it became a way for us to do something as a family. Uh, did you take to it right away? I believe so. Okay, I was not a shy kid. <laughs> I can't guess. I imagine yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything you know involving people, I just love. I love people in general, and I loved people back then. So I just like. I think my mom had me in pageants and things like that very early. Uh, mm. So 
I just remember being on the stage or just put out in front of people a lot when I was little. Um, so I guess that was kind of how that went. But it's been reversed because I am not a that way as an adult. I'm very, I don't want to be on stage. I don't want to be in front of people. And so You're I don't. Kind of an introverted extrovert. Yes. yes. It's a strange uh, mm-hmm. kind of uh, connection there. Yeah. So you see yourself as an introvert. But if you get the stage, I mean, you take over. The character does. The character right. does. And I think, Melissa, you're really kind of an introvert. I am. Introvert, yes. too, I am. as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. That yeah. strikes me as very odd. It is. Very you know, odd. just for the fact that I don't picture you guys that way. But I guess that's true, because I don't see it in your off-Broadway life. Right. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I don't see that as much. But um, Tons of social anxiety. But for some reason, God chose this path, and I said, yes, Lord. And that's how I know it's not me, because I would not be up there. Well, is that like a, let me just get a little (laughs) psychological on you, but is it like a alternate reality for you guys? Like you can step out and not be who you are and you like, well, tell me about that. Talk a little bit about that. What's that mean? Well, one of the most important things that Kat Nifong taught me when we were um, doing the scripted drama is that the second you stepped out on stage, you're no longer you. You are whatever character you are. So when I'm Mary... I leave Melissa behind stage, and I become Mary on stage. And Mary's kind of boisterous, and you know keeps people, you know keeps trying to keep bright and hustle and bustle in line, and has this big you know personality. And so I'm able to portray that character out on stage that is not exactly the way I am in real life. So that's incredible. Now, do you pick her on the basis of that? Do you try to be more of an out? going person when you pick her role or well sometimes mary and bright i wrote with them in mind like they were them yeah 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 and so it always helps me if i kind of have an idea of who's going to play what parts why would you Um, pick that if they're introverts why would you pick their personalities to be like that (laughs) they're introverts but they're both brilliant actresses they're both very good at that and we had done a play where melissa had had a very serious role and she had mentioned to me one night in connect group i want to do something funny if I can next time. And so then when the idea for Marion Bright came up and I was working on that, I was thinking already in my head, like I've got to find a character that's funny for Melissa. But really their personalities are so much like Marion Bright's when they're uh, when we're comfortable. When they're comfortable <laughs> yeah, exactly. and they're outside, you know, when they when they like really relax and get really comfortable, they really are quite a bit like. They start those feeding. Characters. Do they yeah. feed off each other? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. And you can't <laughs> stop them then. Yep. No. How about you? How uh, how like uh, I'd like to go back to your childhood. Like with the you said, okay, and all. Do you see that as an alternate reality, like an escape from your real world? Yes. Really, tell me so. more about that. Um, well, and it's hard for me to find the character. It frustrates Jeremy to no end because I I don't become that person until I'm in full costume. And it's like, once that happens, it's like I've got the props in line, I've got that, and then it Melissa just comes Melissa comes out. to the first practice with everything memorized, <laughs> yes. in character, ready to go. It's crazy. <laughs> Lindsay comes with a list of questions. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to say? What do you want me to look like? How do you want me to act? How do you want me to respond to this? Can I use a trampoline? You know, so. <laughs> so True, it's true. But the end product is always, like, stellar with them. Well, back to your childhood. Did you find yourself, like, was that your escape as far as, like, uh, was, there, was it a painful childhood? Oh, yeah. So that would have been an acceptance. If I, if I performed well, then I... then People like you. Yes. And that's how you would perceive yourself as being liked when you could get up there and go in character. Yes. And then people would respond to that. Yes. But then in the real world, they didn't respond as much? It... It, I was picked apart in real life. Really? So it's easier for me to be a character in front of people because they're picking that character apart, not me. Mm. So if my character makes a mistake, I can blame it on that character. When you say picked apart, are you talking about like your high school years or are you talking about in your home? Oh, yeah. Home, brothers. I had two older brothers. They were not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so I had a lot of low self-esteem, bullied a lot in middle school. Um, really? And yes, and high school was horrible because I was I was working through a lot of things, you know, in home life, and yeah, so. I just I, can't I, even, uh, and maybe it's just me, but I when I think of bullying, I think of boys. But uh, I guess it's very common for emotional side of bullying. Is that the kind of thing there? 
it's more emotional in the what you say with your words and stuff like that to hurt people? I would say emotional was more my home life, and but then actually being bullied by classmates was physical, mm -hmm. yes. Would you say then, like, one of the safest places you felt was on stage? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I would say, because then from, from stage I became a competitive gymnast, and so then that becomes a different realm of a stage yeah performance mm -hmm. so when i would do well or wow the crowd you know it was like yay yay so when I did you I actually kind of become comfortable with yourself i'm still not comfortable with <laughs> you're myself. not comfortable with yourself no, so I'm you're still not. finding yourself here yes. okay okay so we'll still work on that <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> <Did> you, <laughs> how about you melissa like did you feel yourself become real comfortable with yourself at a certain point in your life? Yeah, I, I think I used drama and, and speech and public speaking as a more of way to connect with people. Um, so when I was a sophomore in high school, I moved from Pennsylvania to uh, North Carolina in the middle of the school year. So I had to start a brand new school this my sophomore year of high school. And a few weeks before coming to North Carolina, my mom entered me in the fine arts competition <laughs> in humorous interpretation. And I had competed in, in fine arts in humorous interpretation starting in middle school. And so I was like, Mom, you know, your, your typical teenage response, Mom, why would you have done that? You know, I can't, I can't, you know, go to a new school and just start competing. So I started at the new school, and one of the teachers approached me, and she said, Melissa, we're really excited about you competing in speech. We've never had anyone from the school compete in speech before. And so I was like, okay, she said, now here, I, she said, what, what we're gonna do is each year, um, our students who are going to fine arts perform in chapel. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? <laughs> I've only been at this school three or four weeks and I have to perform in front of the whole chapel. So that day came and I got up and I, I performed the speech that I was going to perform at the fine arts competition. And the kids just start coming up to me. Oh, we loved you. You know, we loved your speech. We loved your story. You know, we're excited about you. You know, competing, and that was really a great way for me to make connections and feel accepted. And feel accepted. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. especially coming from Pennsylvania, probably into a southern school, yes. and wondering, <laughs> do I really fit with these kind of people? Yes, and and there, and they, there were lots of comments about my accent. <laughs> <laughs> they were very intrigued by that. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. That's kind of cool. So that was like, uh, it ended up working out really good when it your did. mom did that. You exactly. weren't so mad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was a humorous character you did? Um, so my the, the one I um, competed in that particular year, and I had done it in Pennsylvania too, was the true story of the three little pigs. So it's the three little pigs, the but from one? the wolf's perspective. A German. It was a German uh, against the Germans. Wasn't it written to um, be against the Germans? I'm not sure about that particular one. This one is fairly new. Um, so it was from the wolf's perspective and how like, you know, the, you know, no one understood him and he got in trouble and this Aww. and this and that. It was, it was a cute little story. So. <laughs> and you were up there acting out the wolf. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember some lines? Um, I remember the very first line was, I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf but you can call me Al. And his whole premise was that he went to the Three Little Pigs house because he needed a cup of sugar to make a cake for his granny. But they misunderstood, Aww. and their houses kept falling down, but it wasn't his fault. So it's a cute little story. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> I never heard that. It's cute. It's like, and so it's the opposite perspective. He really isn't a bad guy. Yeah, exactly. That's what he thinks. That <laughs> and he's he really not a bad guy. But he really was. But he really was. Mm -hmm. And even to the end, he believed that? Oh, yes. I mm -hmm. never knew that. I've never heard that. Have you? I have heard it before, but I, you know, I judge a lot of the fun arts competitions oh, so now, kind of so I do hear those. But yeah, These that's a classics, great one. That's a, they? Yeah, they, they, they would be a classic for um, speech students and public speaking students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. So that is that's cool. good. Well, tell us a little more about the play. So we uh, we did a dinner show in 2019. People seem to really like what we did. Uh, we've had people ask us for the last several years, "Will you do it again? Will you do it again?" And uh, I, I didn't want to for various reasons. It's a lot of work to do a dinner show, and um, not just on the actors, but also on catering and hospitality and setup and cleanup and, and those things. But we began uh, a student ministry drama class or snack class this fall um, because several parents came to me and said their kids want to get into acting, but the 
public sector of that it can be very uh, conflicting in what we believe and what we think. And and so would you do something that would just be more for our church kids? And and so we started that in the fall. I actually worked it out where these ladies and then came other, in. yeah, they all came in and taught. Kat and um, Barb and Angela and Christy and everybody that kind of does different pieces of, of our shows came in and took a night, talked about what they do and how they do it. And uh, we worked on some things, and the kids wanted to do a show. They wanted to do a, a play, and I had had an idea for Secret of Giving with Marion Bright as a Christmas show to do at some point, and so we just sort of, you know, we morphed it, the adults with the students and created this show, and um, I thought 50s would be fun, would be a fun way to do a dinner show because you think of diners when you think of – I also think of Christmas. How are you making that twist? Well, you got to come see it, and, you're, and it'll work. <laughs> it work. I think it works. Oh, it definitely does. Mm-hmm. So it was. It's a little bit of a twist, and even that title song is technically a Christmas song, but yeah. it doesn't sound Christmas at all. Desiree Shuler is is a character in our show who's singing that song, and uh, we had a soundtrack recreate it that's got a little more of the '50s bop to it, and a little less of the Christmas, you know, style whatever so i think it does work i think and and the kids who are in it are actually great they're they've done they're doing really well with it and they're doing really well working with the adults mm-hmm. too so i think it's a neat combination i like it well you know i've seen a lot of your plays so i know uh they're always fun they're always like wholesome healthy and uh, like 50s must be like your favorite time it's like everything's so what would you say just so right yeah i mean i, I probably like the 40s era the best even before uh, the 50s. Even before the 50s. But the, I think there's something fun about the costuming. Like, we've got some of these little props laying here. And just, you know, Cheryl doing the costuming and the, the hair and makeup and just that whole element. Uh, there's a jukebox, you know, in the show. And I think that whole element is fun. And it's fun sometimes to travel back in time because we live in such a kind of a chaotic world. Mm-hmm. And so it, I think it's just... Uh, but not far enough to have to use an outhouse. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, not that far. Which we did the last story. I think we kind of went way back. Happens into to be one the, of my lines. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, I like that. I like I yeah. like the classic. I like the old stuff. Well, I know there's something in me, like you know, when I was a kid, uh, probably teenager in there, and Happy Days came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, there was something about me. I watched. I was oriented my life around the show. Yeah. You know, I don't remember the night it came on, but I do remember just feeling like it's a safe world yeah. and it's a safe place. And it seems like a lot of your stuff is around that, that yeah. kind of theme of just enjoying life and yet seeing the sh- somebody work through a struggle in right, that. Right, And that's, that's, I mean, that's intentional. That's the way I want it to be because I want there to be an encouraging element. This is not like an overly spiritual play at all. I got know? a feeling. Yeah, but, I got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a, you know, there is a little spiritual punch there about the importance of using our time, talent, and treasures as we serve the Lord. And mm-hmm. getting along with people and being kind to people and um, embracing people's differences while standing up for what we believe. And that's all sort yeah. of woven into this story. Now, could I be the Fawns in it? You could. That would be <laughs> awesome. And uh, we'll let you know what night to come. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm afraid of that now. <laughs> so we, we, you know, it's always our, our ratings always go up when Pastor Ron makes an appearance. I wanted to do a cameo. I wanted to, I always like, I would like to, uh, like an Alfred Hitchcock where he always shows up in the movie. Yeah. I would like to always show up in the play and just have one liners, you know, be an old grumpy guy. That's kind of one thing I want to always do. This is the truth. And I think I've told y'all he, every script he reads, can I be the old grumpy guy? <laughs> but there's not one in this show, Well, I'll just be, I'll just show up. You know? I'm and just going to come in. For that every year. I'm always looking yeah. around. Let's see if I show up. Come out somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be great if you did. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, what else do you guys have on your, your your mind or heart? Anything as far as like uh, you would like to say about the play or just about something I maybe missed or something pricked your memories? Well, I want to go back just a little bit and talk about the faith element of this because I, I remember um, in high school one of the um, speech teachers at the school that I went to saying that you can't that Christians have no place in on Broadway. Our Christians have no place in theater because it's an ego-driven, uh, it's just an ego-driven career. It's an ego-driven world. Mm-hmm. And so I understand what she means by that. But at our church, we we have seen where uh, drama can be used to present the faith, to encourage people, 
And I, I, in all the plays that we've done, which have been a lot uh, together, I've never seen ego from anybody on stage, Mm -hmm. which I think is unique. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just kind of testament to, I'd like to hear y'all's opinion. What do you think about that? I mean, I know in my head what I kind of think about that, but uh, how do you think that the faith impacts you as a performer? It's almost like a missions trip. Sure. Every play, Mm -hmm. because there's always somebody new cast, you know, that we do have like same players, but there's always somebody new cast. um, And it never fails. If I pray that prayer, Lord, let me meet somebody new Mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. He brings that together. It might happen the night of a play backstage and they need help with a button or something like that. Or just a time where somebody's saying a line and you have a little time over to the side, you find out about um, struggles they're having with their health or things like that. I mean, we we've seen that a lot mm-hmm. through the years, being able to lift each other up in prayer and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So it is. We kind of walk away from the whole thing changed like you do when you go on a missions trip. Yeah, we we have been in rehearsal before where you know we take a quick break and then I'm like everybody get back together, everybody get back together, and I'm kind of yelling like get back together. And there's a group over here praying, <laughs> yeah. you know, because uh, somebody is bad. just having a real need, you yeah. know. And I love that, you know, I love that that we feel that way. And I love the aspect Lindsay mentioned of, of mm. new people getting involved. It's a great way at our church to connect and and to get involved in some aspect of it. What would you say, Melissa, about the just the faith aspect? Yeah, of it? sure. I, I I can say a couple of things. Number one, I think. Um, Drama is important because some people may not come to a church service, and that could be for a variety of reasons, but they may come to see a drama presentation. And I also think that drama gives a visual element to faith. Mm -hmm. So you can hear someone speak or read the Bible yourself, but when you're seeing Jesus visibly on the cross or when you're seeing a character visibly going through an emotional or difficult time in their, their life, that brings a whole new element um, that people can see in a whole new perspective to faith. Yeah, I think so. so. I think that's a big part of it. I like that a lot. You know, I think immediately what I was thinking too is uh, the chosen. Yes. How that has brought out an aspect of liveliness to. That's probably how they acted, just like us. Sure. Yeah. You know, and you don't think that. Mm-hmm. And you're right. An unsaved person coming in, or even a saved person struggling with something, can immediately identify with that character yes. and and uh, be spoken to. Yes. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I never thought of that. Beyond the plays, because I mean, months after a Christmas play, somebody will pass you that hasn't mm-hmm. seen you since right. then. I just loved what you did, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. I could never do that. And it's an opportunity for me to share that part of my testimony. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't want to do that. So, yes, you can. So, yeah, yeah it's a nice way to. to interact. You know, you cover up a lot. You say you got all this insecurity in you, but I've never seen you ever act insecure in your life. Unless it's just that you're so bouncy and like Tigger, you know, that's kind of what I see as. And, uh, <laughs> and so like, I mean, even your ministries, you know, you dive into those. And I don't think anybody would sit there and say, oh, that girl's so insecure. You know, I think it they would. It shocks everybody. It does. It's really an amazing thing to see how you have been used by the Lord in those kind of things, drama and all those kind of things that you've just kind of dove into. And you got all these things going on underneath you, but people don't perceive it that way. What's your favorite memory of all your plays? Okay, I have one that I've been thinking about. So several years ago, we did a Christmas play, and it was in a diner. And as part of the play, we had gotten um, stuck at this diner because there was bad weather. And we were to be decorating a Christmas tree, and we were to be singing the song, Haul Out the Holly, and we were to have the words memorized. Well, it was a few weeks before the play, and we did not have the words to the song memorized. And Jeremy gave us a talking to about how important it was to have the lyrics memorized. And so I came to the next rehearsal and I called over the cast members who were in this particular scene. And I said, I have printed off the words. I said, I'm going to tape them to this box. I said, so we can read them while we're singing. And they were like, that's a great idea, Melissa. But we didn't tell Jeremy (laughs) that we had printed the words off because he had already given us us the talking to about (laughs) needing to have them memorized. So I taped the word, the lyrics to the box, and we came out, and we always came out strong with "Hall out the holly," and you know we were singing, but then you know we started to digress, and we didn't know the words. So we came out, we started the scene, and we came out strong, and we all got around the box like we were getting out decorations, and we weren't but a couple lines in, and Jeremy goes, "Stop, stop, 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 stop!" 
why is the whole cast gathered around this box? <laughs> And we were busted. <laughs> you had to tell what happened? Yes, I did admit that I had taped the lyrics <laughs> to the box lid, and that's why we were all gathered around the box. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. You should have maybe had it on seven boxes. I know, you know, exactly. every box over here. <laughs> oh, amazing. that's good. It's amazing if you go into our prop room, how many props that have been used in different plays have words and lines <laughs> like written on them. <laughs> Bunch of cheaters. <laughs> the wall of the barn, the last dinner theater. Yes. True. Lots and lots true. of my lines on it. Are you serious? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's the little Bunch cheats of, of the here, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell us your favorite memory. I don't, there's so many. Well, give us one. Oh. <laughs> Just pick one that you uh, find memorable. Oh, wow. That would be hard. My first encounter with Lindsay, oh, because please. I didn't know her as well in a play, was she was playing a character that I had written that was one of your favorite characters from a high school play. And Lindsay just could not get into it, could not get into it. The and then she school. shows up at practice and she's made big like picket signs. <laughs> and she says, I think my character would carry big signs like this around. And she, you made them, you remember that? You yes. made them yourself. Yes. And it was such a cool element that I thought, wow, she really thought through who you her character in. was and how to do that. Mm -hmm. and. I was a so suffragette. A suffragette, yeah, you were like a and suffragette. I didn't even know what a suffragette was, was till that play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that Honest was the problem. Truth. She didn't know, yeah. but but uh, that was a you know that was a cool. Aww, cool we part. have good pictures of us with me. We do at the town hall. The town hall. Yes, yeah, yeah, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, so that was so funny. Yeah, that was a that, that was, was a great one. Okay, what play was it when I had to be a teen with like Ben and them, and we sat on the couch most of the time? Cat was a little old lady. Yep, that was the. What's that called? Um, heirlooms. 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 That's right. Heirlooms. Yeah. So I can remember yeah. just that whole play mm -hmm. rehearsal and during the play and everything, just being with that little group of characters. <laughs> and when Ben would talk about the rats <laughs> talking in the walls. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, that was great. That was fun. That was a fun one. That's cool. Yeah. And when you started having us interact with the audience, I thought yeah. that was going to terrify me. Like you said, breaking that wall uh -huh. and bringing in the fourth yeah. whatever and then we start and Bright's sitting in the audience mm -hmm. and I've got this light up headband <laughs> and true. the people that are sitting around me think that I should be there <laughs> <laughs> they're like Perfectly looking at me normal. like man she really really likes Christmas plays or <laughs> <laughs> something <laughs> but yeah being able to be kind of out there in character amongst the people was really kind of cool so I was glad that you added do that you in. do that do you try to do that well sometimes I mean it's that's a tough thing to do because not everybody feels comfortable doing it mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't translate like we intentionally meant to do it it <laughs> translate like <laughs> they don't know what they're doing up there but I, it's fun to do when we can do it right and I think you know this this dinner show's got a lot of that too where mm -hmm. some of the cast are out into the audience and things and I think that makes it fun uh, for the audience when they're mm -hmm. sitting out there I do like the one snowed in. That's probably one of my favorites, too, where y'all get snowed in at the diner. Yeah, yeah. And, and then everybody can't get back to their places, and you work yourself through that. Right, yep. right. That was one of my favorite ones. That, that, you know, I wrote that during, a, like, a very low period in my life. Uh, and um, actually, Nick gave me a sign during that time that said, Joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. So he, he bought this little plaque. And I just kept reading that every night when I couldn't sleep. I would, I would lay in bed, and I'd look at that plaque and think, Joy is going to come in the morning. I know it is. <laughs> and then the, that whole idea, uh, like I, I personally felt like I feel like I am trapped somewhere that I can't get out of. And that's kind of how that story developed. And it turned into a little Christmas show where a bunch of random strangers got snowed into a diner on Christmas Eve, which would be the worst possible time, right, right. away from your family and stuff. And the premise was the old couple sits there the whole time quietly and then at the very end, you know, tells their story and, and how – you know, God uses all of these, th our pain for a purpose. And so I love that story. That was fun. She got to be my kid's mom. I did. That's and true. That's true. That's true. That's true. true. <laughs> yeah. You were Austin's mom. That's right. Viola. So that was a fun story to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you write these, do you go to a certain place and try to, you always go to this place and look over the mountains or what do you do? <laughs> well, I, I, I do get inspired in the Smoky Mountains and the I do Smoky write Mountains. a lot of lines from there. When I have time, it's really nice to go. Um, and sit either by the creek or sit um, by the fire pit 
at the, the Dream More Resort, even if mm-hmm. I can't afford to it's stay huge. there, I just go sit at their fire pit <laughs> and write, you know, because I do get a lot lot of inspiration from there, and it gives me time to be alone, and um, I have to kind of really pray through a lot of what I write, too, because it doesn't just, like, come right out. Sometimes it's very tough. This show, you know, we had the idea, and it was, like, the third week of January, and I just felt like if I don't have this written in the next few days, we're in big trouble because, <laughs> you know, I'm seeing, like, April coming. I'm yeah. seeing this... And so, you know, you just have to really get to that place sometimes where you feel like, okay, God, either you, you send the words out or shut it down. So that's the way I feel. That's good. But I do, I do like to go somewhere where I can Yeah, and the Smoky Mountains. Do you know the National Park is the most visited park in the United States? I do know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, was just, I just read that on some kind yeah. of little article about yeah. I thought it was always Yellowstone. No. And no. Yellowstone's number two. Yeah. But Smoky Mountains. Yeah, I love it. And one reason it's so convenient. I think it True. had like I think it's, uh, it's 17 million yeah. visitors last yeah, year. It's crazy. And so that's it? incredible, isn't but it? But it is very cool. It is a cool place, and there is something about it. You feel like you're back in time. Right. I, yeah, I think that's what that's I like That's why about you it. probably. Sort of feeling like, uh, you know, and I've, I've said this before to all of y'all, but, you know, my we grew up going there a lot, and my dad loved that area. So there, and my grandpa, papa, and so really when I get to the creek, there's a sense that I feel like, you know, my dad or papa, I feel like just that family presence and the way it was when I was a kid and everything seemed right. Mm. <laughs> you know, when you had yeah. no problems when you were a kid. Yeah. And so that sort of also, I think, helps me kind of clear my uh, mind enough to get focused on what I'm thinking about writing or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, I know you've done that every year and it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, we've run out of time, my friend. I know, I know. And I just want to get in real quick about this dinner show. So y'all tell us, what it, what is it that you think is going to be so great about this show that people should come? What are you looking forward to the most? I am looking forward to Mary and Bright introducing their little sister as part of this show. Oh, that's a surprise element. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yes. That's true. Mary might have a sister. <laughs> Should we say her name or no? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Go see it. <laughs> Go see it to find out her name. Too cute. Um, I think people are going to be surprised at how hard these teens and these young kids have worked. And I think so, too. I, I, I think so I, too. That's what I'm excited about, so I know others will be excited, too. Yeah, in fact, really quickly, I'll tell you this, is when I pitched the idea to the teens in October, here's what I'm thinking about for the story for this play they immediately said, so the conflict was going to be, you know, like a bunch of punk teenagers, you know, with bad attitudes, and the adults come in and teach them how to have good attitudes or whatever. And the, the kids in this group said, you should reverse that, and it should be that we have the good attitudes, <laughs> and the adults have the bad attitudes, and we teach them a lesson. And so that was that, clever. I thought, man, that was a great that's clever. idea did those it? kids had. Yeah. So that's what we did, is it's like the townspeople – want to shut the diner down because they don't think the kids should be hanging out and having fun all the time. And um, so Mary and Bright are going to advocate for the kids. And, you know, it, you, you've got to have you've got to have some fun. you got to have some joy and you've got to be able to enjoy life. And then you got hustle and bustle. They're back. And so they're all about getting the adults rallied like they need to study. They need to do their homework. We don't need to have this all this. Um, what's the line? Frivolous frivolity. You know, we don't need to have all that. And so I think that was really fun. The other aspect is, too, we're getting to do music. That we don't normally get to do. So we're doing some of the, like, the old 50s um, bebop yep. music, you know. And so I think that's fun to get to do that as well. It's well-known music. It's well-known era. music, yeah. yeah. Okay. Music that will be recognizable and yeah. I think will be okay. fun. So And a lot of Elvis puns. Yes. Got some Elvis puns. You're, you're slipping those in? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You guys ad-lib a lot, by the way? Some, but not too much. Me more than her. <laughs> <laughs> I think that has to do with one knowing their lines and <laughs> one, one not knowing their lines, <laughs> working on their lines. <laughs> but their ad libs are good. Their ad libs are good, so we always they like work. that. But thanks yeah. for coming. We appreciate it. It's thanks great. For us. So we want to invite you to join us for the Secret of Giving. It's a dinner show. There is a price to that, of course, because uh, it costs money to have dinner, and because we're raising a little bit of money for our. AV, our audio, visual, and lighting team here at the church to help with future productions and our drama. But I think it'll be well worth the money. You'll enjoy it. And you can go online now and get tickets for that at tbcnow.org. Don't forget our Easter performance, uh, uh, my Easter story with uh, Scott Compton and our Easter choir. That's a free event the first weekend of April. And then if you don't have a church, 
uh, join us on April 9th for Easter Sunday. We're really looking forward to worshiping the Lord and celebrating here and hearing what Pastor Rob has to say. So thank you for listening to this bonus episode. If you, if you enjoyed it, then like it, share it uh, with a friend, comment, let us know what you think. And uh, be sure to check out our future episodes of TBC Today. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining us this week on TBC Today. We want to connect with you. So make sure to visit our website, tbcnow.org, and subscribe, rate, and review the show in iTunes, Spotify, or Amazon Music. Don't forget to share this episode with a friend and be on the lookout for our next conversation.